So, Dry to Dry, The Seasons of Kakadu by Pamela Freeman and Liz Anelli. This book is this, this year's Book Week winner for the Eve Powell Award, which is the Information Book Award. So, Dry to Dry, The Seasons of Kakadu. Now, you'll notice that I'm not reading all of the text. That's because there's little information boxes along the way. And if I read, pop those in as I read, it loses its rhythm of reading. It is the dry. Over the plains and cliffs of Kakadu in northern Australia, the air hangs heavy. It's hot and very humid. The rivers have shrunk down to creeks. The edges of the lakes are banks of mud where crocodiles sunbake. Look closer. There is a northern long-necked turtle that has buried itself safely in the cool mud, waiting until the wet comes. There's information there. A flock of little curlews, a thousand strong, arrives from the Arctic Circle and settles on the grasslands near the rivers. Other birds are coming too. Snipes, goodwits, sharp-tailed sandpipers and more. In the pitty rodent bushes, the rare Leichhardt's grasshoppers hatch and begin to chomp on the bitter leaves. They will go through seven stages before reaching their full growth, molting their skin at each stage. High in the sky over the yellow water wetlands, the red-tailed black cockatoos flock noisily to their nighttime home, a grove of eucalypts, before afternoon storm clouds gather. Lightning and thunder, the first kiss of rain on the blazingly dry grasslands. Two magpie larks sing a duet together while building their round nest of mud and grass. The red lily sends up sweet-smelling flowers from the billabongs and the wetlands. The long-legged jabiru stalks the wetlands, seeking out eels and frogs it can take back to its babies in a huge old nest high up in a banyan tree. Termites build their mounds up. Some are three times as high as a grown man. Other animals live in and on the mounds. Look, a gecko has found shelter from the hot summer sun. Crack, hiss. The monsoon begins, pelting down warm summer rain for hours. Wetlands spread across the low-lying ground. This is the wet. Well, there's a sign. No swimming. Crocodiles. Ooh. Crocodiles leave their riverbanks to go hunting. The spear grass shoots up, delighting in the constant rain and heat. Within it, birds, snakes, lizards and frogs nest and scurry. Creeks and rivers swell and break their banks. Out across the plains, silver sheets of water spread, joining creek to creek until half of Kakadu becomes a wetland. The plateau's towering cliffs become thunderous waterfalls. Below them at night, a chorus of frogs is deafening. In the paper bark, the brush-tailed tuan hunts for centipedes. Look out! Goannas and snakes running away from the floods have climbed the same tree. Below, a water python catches a dusky rat while a king brown snake slithers into the bushes. <laughs> snakes! The rain has stopped. The wet is over. Under clear blue skies, mists blanket the wetlands each morning. Dragonflies zip across the pools and lakes, which are beginning to shrink. Migratory birds leave Kakadu, the great flights of little curlews and snipes darkening the air. The wetlands are a carpet of water lilies, their flowers held up from the lily pads on long, slender stems. Now the wind storms come, surging and gusting. Knock them down storms, flatten the tall spear grass to the ground where it, is, where it is eaten by wallabies or swiftly taken for nests by birds and termites. Green tree ants build a new nest by sticking leaves together and inside it they will farm other insects to collect their honeydew. The sun burns down, the floods recede, leaving rich soil behind for new growth. Creeks retreat into their beds and the water holes sink down. The northern long neck turtle buries itself in the mud on the riverbank. This is the dry. Now Kakadu waits for the wet. It will come as it always does. On our map of Australia at the back here, that shows you where Kakadu is. It's the green bit just up the top here. I can't stop it.